What's good, Fight Fans? This is Ashley's Corner. I want to talk about the fight that's going down this weekend. Um, it's a couple of things that uh, I just wanted to say and put out there. And just in case and if anybody didn't know it, please excuse my voice because I'm still sick. But <clears throat> let me say that uh, Roley's going to be fighting Ismail, Ish- Ishmael Barrels. Barrels, I believe is how you pronounce his name. That's that man on the screen right there. That fight is this weekend at 9 p.m. Eastern time is when the card starts. It's a very short card. I believe it only has three or four fights on the entire card, including the, including the main event. But I think this is going to be an easy victory for Roley Romero. I do think this first fight here at 140 pounds, he will be crowned champion or not champion. Cause this is for, I believe, uh, interim title. This is for the WBA interim title. He was supposed to fight, pre, um, pre, Pulo, or <laughs> however you pronounce his name. He's on the screen. They were supposed to fight May 13th, but he tested dirty for some PEDs, which really was high blood pressure medication. And he forgot to tell the boxing association about him taking the high blood pressure medication. So something was in that medication that came up for him testing positive. That's why he is not fighting Roly Romero and someone in Ishmael is fighting him. This fight was for, um, Pulo's title. It was for his WBA title. I believe he got stripped. I'm not really sure about that situation, but that fight is not happening anymore. And this fight is now happening, but it's not going to be for the WBA title. It's going to be for the WBA interim title at 140 pounds. Let me get into, uh, the specs. Um, Ishmael is 24, three and two, 24 wins, three losses, two draws. He has 22 knockouts on his, um, record. He's been knocked out twice, meaning he's been stopped twice, whether it's KO or TKO or any type of stoppage for that matter. Um, he's ranked, uh, number 39, at 140 pounds, it says on box rec. And he has the WBA gold world super title at 140 pounds. I don't know if y'all remember, but, um, Virgil Ortiz also held the WBA gold title at 147 pounds really early in his career. So he's, this ain't the first time I heard about the WBA gold, um, <clears throat> but along with his specs, he is 20, he is 40 years old, straight up. He's 40 years old. He's a Southpaw. He's five, eight and a half with a 69 inch reach. He's coming off of a KO victory in the fourth round, um, back in August last year, 2022. And he's from, he's from Venezuela and he fights out of Miami, Florida. Uh, he has, Two of his losses came from when he was fighting at 135 pounds. And his knockout percentage, I forgot to say, is 75.86%. So the man do have some pop. The problem is he don't have any defense. He has no defense. He is more likely to throw a lot of punches at you than cover his face. And more than that, he don't even cover his body like that. He don't cover his face at all. And I think his, like his, his, uh, he do got pop and his, his knockout percentage is high because that's all he throws is power punches. Now on the Roley, Roley, uh, Roley Romero is 14 and one. He has 12 KOs. His KO loss was by Javante Davis, Tank Davis, Lolly by <laughs> Rockabye babied him last uh last year, May 20, 2020. I mean 2022. And he's ranked uh number 34 right now at 135 pounds. Like I said, this will be his first fight at 140 pounds. He has an 80% knockout KO rating, and he's 27 years old currently. He's 5'8 with a 68 
inch reach. So the specs are as far as the height and reach are pretty much the same, just a half an inch difference, which really doesn't matter. Again, this fight is this Saturday. It's going to be in Rowley's hometown of Las Vegas. He was born and raised, is what it say, in Las Vegas. Um, this fight will be on Showtime, and it is for the WBA interim title, not the not the real title for the WBA, the interim title. So he still has work to do, okay? Before he become official champion, and I know he'll take this interim title and ride with it, just like he took the interim title at one thirty at one thirty five and roll with it. Literally, he drove to the bodega with that interim title belt. So, um, but he has more work to do if he really want to be a champion. I say, I heard him talk to say that he has plans after he become champion, but that was when he was fighting for the real belt. Since he's not fighting for the real belt, all of those fights that he probably had in mind, they're not going to think about fighting him because he is not an actual champion. Regis Progre is not going to care about the interim title, and neither is Ryan Garcia. Neither is, like, those are the people that he was talking about he wanted to fight. So, unless they're just going to fight Roley for the money, like, his title is really not going to entice anybody because it's an interim title, as he thought he was going to be fighting for the regular title. So I wanted to throw something out there. Well, let me finish saying that I think Roley's going to win this fight strictly because of the things that Ishmael can't do correctly. The fact that Roley Romero is a powerful, is a power puncher, just like Ishmael. He's very awkward. The only thing Ishmael got going for him is that he's a Southpaw. Other than that, the man is 40 years old and he has no defense. He don't guard his face or his body. And when you are fighting somebody that, that punches just as hard as you can, or probably harder. And more than that, he's awkward. So his punches probably get off on you more than yours is. And he's very aggressive as well. Like the younger, tougher guy, the younger guy with just as much pop or more pop that actually has a little bit of defense. I say he's going to win this fight. That's why I say Roley will be, will get this WBA interim title that they're, um, that that's on the line this Saturday. And he's going to stop Ishmael probably within six rounds, in my opinion. But beyond that, on the undercard is these two gentlemen, uh, Gary Antoine Russell and Rancis. These two men fought each other last year. I do believe it was a very entertaining fight, but it was a controversial win. Um, people, people say that the refs shouldn't have stopped the fight as soon as they did. In my opinion, he shouldn't have either. Uh, Rance has been fighting for a long time. He uh, he was a champion at, at one point in time. You should get that man some time to recover or some time to, you know. Well, actually, he didn't need time to recover. He was up on his feet and ready to fight, and the man just waved his arms. And come to think of it, that referee does that quite a lot. And when it comes to Gary Russell's fights, it seems like a, a few of them has in pretty prematurely. And, uh, that's the only thing that's with Gary. You know what I mean? Like I, I really want the referees to give his opponents more of an opportunity to, uh, to prove they self in the ring versus Gary Antoine Russell. He's a very powerful, he's, he's a power puncher and he's very, very aggressive. So, uh, Anytime you're dealing with a, a fighter with boxing IQ that actually has power and he's really aggressive, he's going to drop his opponents once or twice. But you know when two, like, you know, Mexican warriors fight, you know, just like Jose Cepeda, and I forgot the other guy he fought, both, like, they dropped each other like five, six times. It was named fight of the year. You got to give other fighters opportunities to be, to do that to become fighter of the year, to make it, you know, this, this fight in between these two gentlemen was very entertaining. The referee should have let it go on and let, you know, you know, these two guys are young. They're not really old. And you, you'll see two Mexican fighters in a high thirties and the ref allow both of them to get beat up, bloodied up, dropped a few times. And they don't never raise their hands, but you know, referees aren't, cre aren't created equal and all of them have their own rules and do their own thing. So, um, but really, what I wanted to say is that Gary Russell uh, is fighting um, someone named Kent Cruz for a 10-rounder, and Rantis has a 10-rounder versus a man named Omar on Roley's undercard. Now, Gary Russell was supposed to be in line to fight the champion 
He pulled out for some reason or his team pulled out for some reason that's not known. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to speculate, but it's a, it's a reason that I don't know. So, um, that's when Roly slid in to fight the champion, which was very weird because Roly just coming off a loss. He moves up and get a title fight over Gary Antoine Russell. So in my opinion, since, since Roly really wants this title, he wants that WBA title and wants to become a champion. He has all of these plans. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have to fight someone after he beats this 40 year old Ishmael. Is it going to be Pulo? Pulo? Does he still, does he still have the WBA title? Did he get stripped or not? I really don't know and can't say. So Roly may fight Pulo after after he beat Ismail for the real WBA title, or they might schedule Roley versus Gary Antoine Russell, which makes sense. But you still have the possibility of these two men running it back and having a rematch. And then the person, this being some type of title eliminator and the person who wins this match fights the person, fights, fights the person that has the title, which would probably be whoever wins in between Roley and Prulo if they allow him to give if they give him that chance but let me know what you think about everything that I said always like and subscribe subscribe to the channel if there's any topics that I've missed or that you want me to talk about please hit me up at IG or in the comment section my info is in the description of every single live that I do but like I said always like and subscribe to the channel let me know what you think about everything that I said all right peace